Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax, the Golfie team. Welcome to the Golfie Real Estate Show with host Stephanie Vivier. And so, but not as much as buyers for uh, people like first time buyers looking for uh, a place to live. Um, so, how do they fix that? I don't know. I, I don't know if they can fix it. The only thing they can do is build more homes. And right now, uh, developers and builders are not building homes because the interest rates and people aren't jump uh, aren't interested in waiting uh, a year to have their house built. They rather look find something that is uh, built already, and they get to move in in sixty to ninety days. Yeah, it is a, a really a tricky one because you mentioned those REITs that are. Um managing these portfolios with these you know large rental portfolios and that can sound like oh these you know giant corporations or whatever that are taking all of our homes but many people have investments in them you know you mentioned that they were pension stocks so it's a good thing for a lot of people because that means that their pensions are going to be worth more so it really is you know once you say this might be a little bit of a con you also see that uh, some of its pros at the same time oh absolutely but i'll tell you though there are large REIT companies and uh, what, what REITs are, they're real estate, just in case some of the listeners here, REITs are real estate investment trust. Uh, basically, they're a, a real estate a fund that you can invest in. Now, there are like BlackRock, they are buying up real estate like there is no tomorrow. They're going to own a lot of real estate and there's other large companies like them that are buying up everything. They don't care. They're just buying it hold it in their portfolio. They know real estate goes up. They're renting them and they're hanging on to them. And it, and it's just going to increase. They'll just drive prices up. Now, what will happen? What will the prices of rental uh, units will, will start coming down? And that's when it'll, it'll change. Uh, you'll see uh, rent, rent will start uh, climbing down and, and be, and rent is climbing. It is starting because a lot of these new buildings that are going up are rentals because anything that's built after uh, November of 2018, there is no rent control. And we can talk about that after the break. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. You are listening to the Golfie Real Estate Show. Give them a call, 905-641-0308. Online, robgolfie.com. So much information on that website. Highly recommend checking it out. Stick around. We've got more with Rob Golfie next here on News Talk 610 CKTV. All right, there we go. Welcome back to the Golfie Real Estate Show. I'm Steph Vivier. Rob Golfie is here already getting into some deep conversation about the real estate market now. And uh, Rob, just before the show, you know, we're talking about some of those real estate investment groups, the difficulties in an affordability. And, and you were mentioning that we're going to see more rentals happening uh, because of the lack of rent control uh, for things that were built after 2018. Can you explain that for people? So, um, what happened was in the, uh, I think it was in the 70s, the government imp imposed a uh, 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 rent control. Basically, um, they, uh, people cannot, uh, landlords cannot increase rent. So then that's when uh, developers stopped building uh, apartment buildings. Say, well, hey, you, if you guys are going to control the rent, forget it. We're not interested. We're not building anything. So over the course of probably 40, 50 years, developers really didn't build any new uh, apartment buildings. So that caused a lot. Uh, now where we are today, that caused a problem. We have a shortage of uh, rental properties. So in 2018, they announced that if any newly built house, uh, condo or apartment building uh, is built after November 2018, there is no rent control on that, meaning that you can ask for whatever rent you want. You can increase the rent, whatever you want. And, uh, and they, they can't uh, argue about it. Either they stay or they go. That's why you give them 90 days notice saying, hey, we're increasing your rent. Now, what's happened with that is now I think these developers and, and that built these condo buildings, they're starting to feel the pain because now there's a, a bit of an abundance of these uh, apartment apartments and they're not filling them as fast because one, they're expensive. Two, there's there's more out there now available. So now they're feeling it. So so the government did a good thing uh, on uh, for the long run, but in the short run for these developers, they're gonna get they're gonna they're gonna hurt uh, because they're hoping that uh, their buildings will be worth a lot more with the rent that they're getting. But people are gonna move out. They're gonna move out and they're gonna go where it's cheaper. 
Um, so that that's what's happening on the apartment side of things. So things are going to get better for the renters out there. And it's and it's every year as time goes on, it is going to get better because I know some buildings out there, they're struggling even filling them up. So what what are you going to do when you have a problem filling up in a, an apartment building where you're going to lower the rent so you can get more people sure. to come in so you're going to start seeing more of that happening uh as as time goes on makes sense uh, rob i might in this is one of the um objections that you get a lot when you you go to chat with someone you know they want to list their home and they're doing that diligence of that you've mentioned you know interview different realtors and and i'm sure this one comes up well why can't i just sell it myself selling it privately uh let's talk about the pros and cons of that yeah so you know what i get it i mean i was uh i, I bought and sold real estate before i became a realtor and i get it i wanted to save money I get it. Now, there, there, there is a cost savings. You have to be careful, though. But timing is also an issue. you got to be very careful. Um, I found that if you sell your house privately and, and the market is super hot, and that happened in 2021, uh, a lot of people, some people say, hey, I sold my house privately, but they didn't get competition on their house. They, like, you know what I mean? The, the seller did not get competition. He sold it. Meanwhile, then after his deal's done, his neighbor's houses are all selling for fifty to $100,000 more than what he sold for. And, he's, and that's happened in that fast-paced market. Now, when you're buying, you got to be careful because um, as a buyer, you're not, um, the seller's not as governed as if a realtor was representing that seller. There's insurance involved, a realtor is insured, we got errors and emissions insurance or anything like that. And, and everything should be disclosed. Me, myself as a realtor, if I'm going through a house, if I know of something and there's an issue with the house, I have to disclose it. I, I, can't let, uh, I can't let a buyer buy it and not disclose that there's an issue with the house. Otherwise, I'll be in trouble. My job is to verify information on this house. Now, if the homeowner you know, hides information from me, then he's got an issue. The other thing is, here's another thing. So let's say we get a deal done on a house and we do a home inspection and the home inspection reveals that it's got some deficiencies in it, like say vermiculite in in insulation. Now I know as a realtor, it's got vermiculite insulation. Now I'm gonna verify if, if it is ver 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 oh, God, I'm having a hard time saying it, vermiculite insulation. And I'm going to get my own expert to go in there to, to make sure that that inspector that inspected it, he was uh, like, he's verified and, it, and, and he knows what he's talking about. So I get my own guy in there. And if it is, now I have to disclose it. So there's two things that we do. We disclose that it's got vermiculite or we hire a company to go in there and get rid of it and then and get it on the market and sell it. There's, there's those options on there. Now, I can't get... I cannot allow anybody to buy that house without letting them know. Now, we have been fired because we know information and we tell the homeowner we have to disclose. And they, they think they, if they get rid of me as an as a agent, they get another agent, it's a clean slate. It's not, that case. It's not the case at all. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, now if, a new, if they get a new agent, now that I know that that house has got vermiculite, the homeowner knows it's got vermiculite. If the agent doesn't know, guess what? Somebody, that, that homeowner is going to be in trouble. Or, or I might even tell the agent, say, hey, listen, I got fired because I had to disclose that there's vermiculite in there. I'm just letting you know now. Now that he knows, he has to disclose it. You know, you can't just keep going uh, firing agents and, and eventually nobody's going to uh, disclose it. You have to disclose it. And, and it's a duty because you as a buyer do not want to end up with a house that it's going to cost you money to get rid of something that could have been uh, resolved prior to closing. So though, that's one of the, that's one of the, the pros, uh, the, the, the pros of having a realtor. Now, not having a realtor we've had where deals don't get closed a realtor. If, if he's representing the buyer, he's going to make sure the buyer is, uh, pre-approved and, and, and has got, uh, his, all the mortgage details in place. We find a lot of people when they buy privately, they haven't done their, uh, due diligence in, uh, with their, um, uh, pre-approval for the mortgage. And a lot of times they think they could just go up to the mor a mortgage company, a bank two weeks before closing. Hey, I'm here to get a mortgage on the sales. Here's the paperwork. Go ahead. And meanwhile, they get denied. 
That happens a lot. And then we get the phone call saying, oh my God, they bought something else. The sellers bought something else and they need to close and they call us and say, this guy is not closing and everything else. So there's, there's those things about it. You do save money in some cases, but a lot of cases it can cost you a lot of money. And, uh, and I get it. I I've sold a house privately, uh, before I became a realtor and, uh, but there were, there were issues though. There were one issue was there was a fraudulent guy. Um, I sold one house, he was fraudulent and he was doing a scam. So there you go. There's, there's one there. I had, uh, the, uh, fraud of OPP or whatever called me up. This is before I was a realtor. I was like 29 years old. And uh, they wanted to know everything about this guy. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like this, I thought this guy was closing the deal and everything else like that. Um, negotiations um, also is a factor with the realtor. If, uh, sometimes things get heated if you're dealing privately. Like you get, um, you know, things can get heated if, if the buyer and seller are, are directly, um, you know, negotiating with each other things can get ugly that way things can get ugly uh, on closing date just you know you were supposed to leave this you didn't do this agents uh, are supposed to be there for as a mediator to make sure things run smooth and when it is with a realtor i gotta tell you 99.9 percent .9 it does run smooth i mean you get the odd ones that things do uh, uh things go sideways and it's just because uh, there were some unforeseen things or maybe the seller or the buyer, you know, uh, went sideways and, it, and it's hard to tell, but, but, uh, but 99.9% .9 of deals done with realtors do close and, and the, and, and it, and it, and it makes it smooth for any uh, buyer or seller. Yeah. On that negotiation side, Rob, too, I think, you know, you talked about the tensions, the other side of it, and I don't like to admit that I'm like this, but sometimes I'm too nice. You know, like I might not when I'm facing someone say all that I want for, for something out of a deal. So it's good to have somebody else that you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you go in. You be the bulldog. You <laughs> yeah. get me what I want, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you know, sometimes people just don't have that in them. And you know what? And then the inconvenience of people coming through your house, uh, you have to be there for all those showings and all that kind of stuff uh, if you're selling privately. And but with a realtor, everything's on the system. Everybody's insured. Everybody, you, everything's documented everything is all there and uh there are some um i think in germany is the, their um pri private for sales is probably one of the highest in the world now they're it, they're, they're used to doing that um i think in quebec it's about uh, i think eight or nine percent uh in ontario um i don't i don't even think it's one or two percent um thank I, you so much for joining us thank you very much Rob Golfy from the Golfy team. Give them a call, 905-641-0308, robgolfy.com. That's Rob, G-O-L-F-I.com, and start packing. This is News Talk 610 CKTV.